They won Toronto St. Paul's. They they breached Fortress Toronto. Like that matters though, Miss. Oh, that matters. I mean, come on. What did they do? What did the conservatives do? They came in and they, they said the everything that's wrong. With them. No, because people are upset for sure. And then it's at a by-election where there is no consequences to flipping a seat. If you think the liberals are bleeding to death now, just wait until these four upcoming by-elections take place this year. The hemorrhaging will continue throughout this year, with the liberals expected to lose another writing by a landslide and only retaining one of these four contested writings. The narrow loss the liberals suffered in St. Paul's is a shock that, despite being a shock, completely failed to resonate with Justin Trudeau. Now, this was obviously not the result we wanted, but I want to be clear that I hear people's concerns and frustrations. These are not easy times, and it's clear that I and my entire Liberal team have much more work to do to deliver tangible, real progress that Canadians across the country can see and feel. We'll never stop working and fighting to make sure that people have what they need to get through these tough times. My focus is on your success, and that's where it's going to stay. There's a lot of speculation that a loss in St. Paul's would serve as an unofficial referendum that would signal to Trudeau that his ticket's been punched. It's even been said the Conservatives actually wanted to lose the by-election to stave off any possibility of Trudeau throwing in a towel. Well, the Conservatives truly underestimated Trudeau's level of narcissism. While Trudeau himself might have no inclination to take a hint, perhaps the forthcoming losses will jolt the caucus into giving him the heave-ho. So here they are in the likeliest order of being held. Writing 1, La Salle et Mar Verdun. This Quebec writing has been held by Liberal Dave Lametti since 2015. In January, Lametti tendered his resignation effective February 1st of this year to join law firm Fasque and Martineau. In the past three elections, the Liberals have held roughly 43% of the vote here, and if polls remain steady, they're expected to retain this seat. The Conservatives have never done well in this writing, with their cut of the votes typically amounting to a dismal 7%. The party with the most plausible chance of giving the Liberals a run for their money in LaSalle would be the Bloc, which presently sits at 23%. At the time of this video, only the NDP, the PPC, and the Greens have nominated candidates for this by-election. A by-election for this writing is due by July 30th. Writing number 2, Elmwood Transcona. This Winnipeg writing has long been an NDP stronghold shared by a father and son dynasty. The father would be Bill Blakey, who served for a total of 18 years. His son, Daniel, had held the writing from 2015 to 2024 when he announced his resignation in order to work for Premier Wab Canoe's administration. Despite belonging to the NDP since 1988, the Elmwood writing did change hands to the Conservatives for one term back in 2011, which is somewhat bizarre because that was the year of the Orange Wave election. As it presently stands, the Conservatives come in at a distant second with 32% of polling to the NDP's 46%. So don't expect any St. Paul-style surprise to occur here. Those are the two writings that are expected to deliver exactly what's they anticipated them. It's the next two writings that could cast a pall that cannot be ignored by liberals. Writing number three. Cloverdale, Langley City. The suburban Vancouver writing is a textbook definition of a swing writing. Since 2011, the writing has changed party colors four times over. Now that the Liberal MP John Aldag has called it quits to run in provincial politics, the writing appears to fall directly into conservative territory with very little contest. Not only should this come as a shock to Liberals on account that it's a writing that was previously occupied by a Liberal MP, but the sizable gap between what the Conservatives are presently pulling at versus the polls they accomplished in the past should be cause for concern. For instance, when Aldag last clinched the writing for the Liberals, he did so with just over 39% of the vote. The Conservatives took 36%. Today, polling indicates a by-election would see the Conservatives claiming a whopping 51% of the vote. Given that the last time the Conservatives won this writing, which was in 2019, they did so with 38% of the vote. Quite the substantial leap forward. And finally, we have writing number four, which is Halifax. Shortly before the House of Commons adjourned for the summer break, Liberal MP Andy Fillmore who represents this Halifax writing revealed that he would not be returning for the fall session. This to me is another clear indication of a Liberal Party clearly seeing what's ahead and taking out contingency plans. 
Phil Moore is vacating his seat to run for mayor in Halifax, a job that, should he win, will give him four additional years of job security, as well as a pay hike over his MP salary. Phil Moore has won the last two federal elections with 42% of the vote, which is down considerably from the almost 52% of the vote that put him in the MP's chair in the first place back in 2015. This writing is very reminiscent of Toronto St. Paul's as the Liberals are running neck and neck with the NDP. With only a 2% margin separating the two parties, losing this writing would again put out the signal that the Liberals have reached their best by date. Given that Fillmore gave his notice in June and Elections Canada has a six-month rule, we certainly should expect a by-election for this writing before the year is out, likely around the end of November, beginning of December. So what's your take? Do you think Trudeau can actually survive the loss of two more Liberal writings? Or do you think he'll be forced through the door by his caucus? Sound off in the comments. Thank you for watching and please consider subscribing.